Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing. What is going on, baseball fans? How are we doing tonight? Did John Daniels actually trade Lance Lynn? I can't believe it happened. Lance Lynn is now a White Sox. Razel Iglesias is on the move to the West Coast to the Angels. Adam Eaton, speaking of those White Sox, is going back to the White Sox. The Royals... They are just doing a ton of shopping this offseason. Who saw that coming? We're going to get all into it tonight. Before we get started, incinerate that like button. If you are just joining, think about subscribing if you are looking for more baseball news. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. And what is going on, baseball fans? How are we doing tonight? We finally have some baseball news to talk about. I feel like I haven't been on here in a few days, but there's just been really nothing to talk about. So finally, we got something to talk about. This is kind of nice. What is going on? Seeing familiar faces in here. Paul Garcini, what is, or Paul Corsini, sorry about that, is here. Cody in Texas is here. Base, BZ Baseball, what is going on? I, I'm, I'm just waking up here, I guess. I can't talk. Uh, sellout, what is going on? Drip Z, hello, hello. Matisse Cardenas, hello, hello. Baseball Productions, what is going on? Jake Romeo, how are we doing? All righty. Well, it is uh, nice to be back to actually talk some baseball. Uh, we're still seeing a few people file on in. We're at 30 people at the moment. All righty. If you are just joining us, hit that like button. It really does help get out to more baseball fans. I don't know how... That algorithm is just so big on that like button. I don't know why. Um, if you are just joining, you're looking for more baseball news, looking for more base- baseball content, I cannot talk tonight. Hit that subscribe button. I'm talking baseball here all the time, especially this offseason. It is has been a bit of a slow offseason so far, but there is stuff starting to happen. So um, anything juicy that comes on in, I'm going to be talking about it. So... Uh, BZ Baseball, that would be amazing if we can get to 7,000 by opening day. You know, I, I mean, I actually just realized I have not been here since we hit 4,000 subscribers. That actually happened overnight, 
And uh, I woke up. I, I was like, whoa, I'm at 4,000. Holy crap. So everyone, I want to thank you so much for helping us get to 4,000 subscribers. Like I said, when we first started the channel, I didn't even know what to expect. us to, So to get to 4,000, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool number to look at. So, hey, let's get to, let's get to 5,000 by opening day. Let's get, let's get to a billion by opening day. Let's do it. I, why not? Let's just do it. So anyway, enough of me rambling on. Let's get to the baseball news. Uh, let's start with the big one. And can I just please say this? Can I just say this? John Daniels, it is about time you have traded Lance Lynn. I don't know what took you so long. Trade deadline, you should have traded him. I don't know. I guess there was some stuff Ken Rosenthal was writing about why he didn't trade him. But uh, either way, John Daniels, it's about freaking time you have traded Lance Lynn. He is now a White Sox. This is a big move for the White Sox. The White Sox, we saw... This past season, a very talented team. Lots of stuff going on with that White Sox team. Lots of potential in the future. And with a guy like Lance Lynn now in the fold, this White Sox pitching staff, this team, man, that is starting to look like a pretty good team if you ask me. And now you got a guy to go go behind uh, Lucas Giolito. And I mean, come playoff time, you got these two going and you got a Dallas Keuchel in there as well. I I still think they might be maybe one starting pitcher away, but either way, getting Lance Lynn is huge for this White Sox team. So uh, let's break down this trade. Let's go to one of my favorite websites to go to for all of my baseball news mlbtraderumors.com so if you are not aware I would imagine everyone here is aware of mlbtraderumors.com but if you are not that is a great place to get some news so I'm not affiliated with this website at all I just really like what they do here so um, as you can see White Sox acquire Lance Lynn in exchange they're getting Avery Weems so uh, we'll talk more about him in a little bit Ken Rosenthal was the one to report this uh, again, um, oh, so they're gonna. So I completely left out. They're getting Avery Weems along with Dane Dunning. Uh, this to me, I think there there are gonna be some people that don't like this trade very much for the White Sox. I personally am on the on the side where I think it actually is good for both teams. I think with what the White Sox are trying to do. They're really trying to establish themselves in that central division in the American League. And to give up a Dane Dunning is a pretty big piece. But the old saying goes, if you want to get a good player, you got to give up something good. Lance Lynn, he's an established name. Dane Dunning, I really like Dane Dunning. I think Dane Dunning is a guy where if we pull up his stuff real quick, this is a guy, he's 25 years old. He's not going to blow you away with a fastball. He sits really in the low 90s with his fastball, but he's got a lot of good just other things going on with him. Good off-speed stuff. I mean, Dane Dunning is a guy, I think, you put him in the back end of your rotation, I think he could end up being maybe a, a, a third starter in your rotation. Maybe even possibly, if he continues to grow and, and just mature as a pitcher, I think this is a guy you could maybe see him be maybe be a number two one day. Um, I don't think this is like an ace level kind of a guy, but either way, I still think there's a lot of potential with a guy like Dane Dunning. I think the Rangers did really good here getting a Dane Dunning. Um, I mean, hey, John Daniels, I have given you a lot of crap since the trade deadline uh, with you not making any moves at the trade deadline, which I thought was completely crazy, but Good for the Rangers here getting a young starting pitcher, a Dane Dunning. Again, I like Dane Dunning a lot. If we actually go to Dane Dunning, I know I'm talking more about Dunning here than uh, a Lance Lynn, but you know what? While we're on it, let's just kind of take a look at exactly what the Rangers are going to be getting. Um, Again, he is 25 years old. He's not going to blow you away with velocity, but he's going to get the job done, at least this past season. He did a great job this past season. He was a 29th pick overall in the 2016 draft. I really liked what Dane Dunning did this past season. Really showed a lot of potential. But with the White Sox, what they're getting, you're getting a Lance Lynn. I mean, this is a guy who 
has just been really solid in his career. He had a bit of a hiccup in 2018 with the Twins. He went over to the Yankees. He did a lot better with them. Uh, But with Texas in 2019, a 3.67 ERA, he had a 3.13 FIP. He finished fifth in the Cy Young voting. Actually, my screen is a little off. Let me just move this. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. So as you can see, Cy Young uh, finished fifth in the Cy Young voting. He was doing really good this past season too. Uh, finished sixth in the Cy Young voting. I mean, he led the major leagues in innings pitched. You know what you're going to get with a Lance Lynn. He's going to give you a lot of starts every single year. If you go back to what year? 2012. He makes all of his starts. Lance Lynn is a guy that you can count on. The guy's a bulldog. He's going to go out there. He's going to give you innings. And he's going to give you productive innings as well. Uh, he's. I think this is a great move for the White Sox. This is exactly what they needed. Exactly the kind of guy that they were looking for. You got Lucas Giolito as your number one. They're looking for a guy to go alongside him for the playoffs. You can see the White Sox, they came up short in the, uh, in the expanded version of the playoffs this past year. And they just couldn't quite get it done. And... And it's funny because Dane Dunning, he pitched in that game three against the Athletics and they took him out after one inning. So, you, you know, if you had a guy like Lance Lynn, you, that's a guy that you can count on. You, you had Dane Dunning in there on a very short leash. But what do you expect? He's a rookie pitcher. He's in the playoffs. You know, he's on the big stage. You know, but if you had a Lance Lynn in that spot or for, a, you know, a, a game two even, I mean, you got to feel a lot better about your chances. So I think this is a really good move for the White Sox. Uh, Again, I think a lot of people might kind of not like this so much because you gave up a guy like Dane Dunning. But I think, well, because another reason too is that Lance Lynn is going to be a free agent. So after this season, he is a free agent. So if the White Sox, I mean, he's 33 years old. If the White Sox can maybe get him to sign an extension, maybe for a few seasons, I think that could, that's a win-win right there. Um, I think that's where a lot of people have a problem is that you're giving up a young starting pitcher in a Dane Dunning and you're only going to, as of right now, you're only getting one year of a Lance Lynn. So that's where I could see people getting a little upset about it. Either way, I think this gives the White Sox a great chance this season. I think with the American League going into next year, I mean, everyone thought the Yankees this year were going to just dominate the American League. That did not happen. The Rays, they were this close to winning a World Series. So um, that American League, in my opinion, is going to be pretty up in the air. The Twins, a lot of people thought were going to be pretty good last year. Look what happened there. So, you know, I think the White Sox, they are really trying to make some moves this offseason. And, and, I, and I love that. I love that for the White Sox. I think this is exactly what they needed to do. This was the guy they needed to get. And another thing, too, with Lance Lynn is that a lot of people don't really talk about this so much. He's only getting $10 million this year. What a great contract for him. Three years <clears throat> Sorry, three years and thirty million. What a great contract to have. He's not expensive. So Lance Lynn to me, this is such a win-win for the White Sox. I know, you, but if like the old saying goes, you have to give up something good to get something good. That's just how it is. So with the Rangers, good on them. Good, good on them for getting a young starting pitcher who just had a successful rookie season. And heck, whatever, he got pulled after one inning in that playoff game, but he started a playoff game. I mean, you know, I think the Rangers, good move for them, good move for the White Sox. I think this is a move that benefits both sides. I think this is a win-win for both sides. Um, It will be even better if the White Sox can get Lance Lynn to sign an extension for a few more seasons. But tell me what you think down below in the chat Do you think this is a good move? Give me a thumbs up on this trade. If you think it's a good move, give me a thumbs down on this trade. Do you think the White Sox maybe didn't make a great trade here? Do you think maybe the Rangers could have maybe gotten more? Uh, Tell me what you think. Baseball baseball unboxed, that's where I think as well. I think it's a good move for both teams. Um, So... BZ Baseball, is it 8 million per year? I'm seeing three years, 30 million. According to my math, I think that's 10. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, baseball unboxed, agree. Yeah, they each get what they need. So we'll have to see how this plays out. At least what you know with Lance Lynn, I, I think 
what's good about him, like I said earlier, is he's going to give you innings. This is a guy that's had a pretty clean uh, track record when it comes to his health. So, uh, Paul, I agree. Great trade both ways. Um, but yeah, so, but staying on the White Sox, staying on the White Sox, they are staying very, very busy and they weren't done there. They weren't done there. They're bringing back an old face in Adam Eaton. They signed him to a one year deal and this actually got quite a bit of news today, uh, quite a bit of attention. Uh, so let's go to that story real quick. Adam Eaton did just recently play for the White Sox just a few years ago, and now he's going back. So there's a couple of things to take note of with this kind of a move. So Adam Eaton, he didn't have the best year last year with the Nationals, kind of a down year. I mean, but honestly, again, it's a 60-game season. I keep saying this so much. Who knows if that was really such a, a down year overall? You're not get, you didn't get a full sample size, so who knows if Adam Eaton ends up having a, a kind of has, has a better season if you have a full season last year. So um, with Adam Eaton, let's get to the story here. So Adam Eaton here. Uh, this was first reported by NBC Sports Chicago's Chuck Garfine. Uh, so they signed him to a one-year, $7 million contract. So there is a club option. That is one thing to take note of. So good on the White Sox getting a club option there. So um, the way for the, the White Sox to make this work logistically is they they did cut ties with Nomar Mazzara. They did not tender him a contract. So Adam Eaton now, he gets... Uh, there's a spot now for an Adam Eaton. So let's actually go take a look at Adam Eaton. Again, not the greatest year this past year. He was actually very terrible in 60 games this year for, in a 60 game season this year for the Nationals. Uh, as you can see here, OPS of 669, only hit 226. I mean, he had a few home runs, but again, overall for the Nationals this year, just a, it's a terrible year all around. So Adam Eaton, though, if we go take a look, um, he has been better over the last few years. If you go back here, his time with the Nationals overall was very good. If we actually take a look at how he did with the Nationals over the past three seasons, overall, he hit 288. He averaged an OPS of 802. He averaged 22 home run or uh, 14 home runs. I mean, Goodness gracious, a, a very solid player, Adam Eaton. And if we go back to his three years with the Chicago White Sox, I mean, he was very good there as well. He was hitting 290 over that time, 783 OPS, nothing nothing to, you know, get down on there. I mean, very, a pretty solid player for the White Sox during his time. I mean, he's not going to be the best player all around, but he was a solid guy to have out in your outfield. So uh, with the Nationals, he did improve. So again, he did have this down year in 2020. So uh, either way, if he can bounce back, I think the White Sox got themselves a pretty good deal here. I mean, looking going back to 2016, you know, he was, I mean, he wasn't anywhere near getting an MVP award, but finished 19th in the MVP voting. That's pretty good, if you ask me. So either way, Adam Eaton, he's a solid player. Uh, I, I've always, I've always liked these kind of players. They're not going to, you know, blow the stats through the roof. Um, but they're just going to be a solid player to have out in your outfield to, or, or whatever. So, um, one thing to take note of here is now th this to me, I actually did read some reports that the White Sox weren't really in on George Springer anymore. And this to me seems to be the case now officially. I mean, I, I guess technically you could still bring in a George Springer, um, but either way, I mean, I don't, I don't think that's really just going to work. Uh, if we go take a look at the White Sox depth chart. Um, so as of right now, you got Luis Robert in center field. Uh, I mean, you got Eloy Jimenez over in left. You got Adam, Adam on hell over in right. So him and Adam on hell and, um, Adam Eaton, they're probably going to share time out in right field. Probably see more Adam on hell, maybe get that fourth outfielder kind of job. Um, you know, he, he did, he did decent in 2020, but, um, I, he, him and, uh, Eaton, they're probably going to be splitting some time. Um, over, overall though, I don't see the White Sox getting a guy like a George Springer now. I just don't see the point. I didn't think they really needed him. I really liked that offense as it was. I sure. I mean, would you like to have a George Springer? Yeah, absolutely. But with, the with what the White Sox already have offensively, 
you know, and, and just with the whole pandemic and everything, do you really want to go out and spend all that money for a George Springer? I think the White Sox are doing pretty good with kind of where they're the path that they're on. They're may, you know, they have some good prospects that are coming up now. You're getting Andrew Vaughn. He could be up this year, maybe next year. Um, so I, I think with the White Sox, I don't think you needed to go get a George Springer. I believe MLB trade rumors predicted the, the uh, Springer to go to the White Sox. I think. Did they? Let me actually, let's actually go take a look at this. I think they predicted that George Springer to go to the White Sox. I could be wrong. Yes, they predicted him to go to the White Sox. I remember, uh, again, I love MLB trade rumors, but I remember reading this and I was, uh, and I was thinking like, why? Why would the White Sox want to go after a George Springer? Um, why would they want to spend all this money when they already had a really good offense as it was? Now, of, I mean, of, could you hate this move? No, I wouldn't have hated this move. If I were a White Sox fan, I'd be stoked. But I just think with what the White Sox already had, you didn't need to go out and spend all this money. So, I mean, again, they could still go get him, I guess. Um, I mean, the, the offseason is still quite young. So this could still happen, I guess. I don't know. I don't see it happening. I think they're going to... I think they're. Fu- I think they got Adam Eaton. I-, I think they like what they have out in that outfield. I mean, again, like I said, you know, a couple times, it, it could still happen. Of course, it could. Um, do I see it happening? Probably not. I don't see why they would want to bring him in. I don't know why they would want to spend all this money. So, um, but tell me what you think. Uh, let's get back to Adam Eaton here. What do you think of Adam Eaton going to the White Sox? I, I like it. I like it. He's not too much money. He's not going to break the bank. Um, has a t- has a club option, which I think is good too. So the White Sox have the option to bring him back or not. So yeah, if they can get a bounce back season out of, out of Adam Eaton, absolutely. And uh, you know, you got Adam Eaton, he, he'll he get a bit of a raise for the 2022 season if he has a good season this year. So we'll have to see how this works out. But give me a thumbs up if you like this move. I like it. I think this is a good move. Um, the leopard, I see you saying meh. I, I I can see where you're coming from. It's not the flashiest of moves. It's not the sexiest of moves. Of course, George Springer would have been the sexy move, but in a way I kind of like this move because I kind of, it kind of says to me that the White Sox, they are, they have confidence in the guys that they have, but they're okay with making, uh, kind of like a minor move like this that could just kind of beef up, you know, that, that team they already have. I, I like it. Um, the knob, I, you know, I actually predicted Jock Peterson to go to the White Sox. I thought Jock Peterson would have been a really good fit for the White Sox. Um, so it looks like that prediction is not going to happen now. But at least I was on the right track. I'll say I'll give myself a slight pat on the back is that the White Sox were looking for a guy to come in for that outfield spot in right field. Nomar Mazzara was not a good option for them last year. That ended up being a bust. So at least I was on the right track with the Jock Peterson going to the White Sox. I think that would have been a great move. Um, so, but yeah, Paul, um, you know, Eaton, decent player. You know, I think he's gonna, he's a veteran guy. I think he's gonna be good for that, good for that clubhouse. So Chester, the chicken eater does not like it. I always love the vomit faces he puts. Always love it. I love the emotion, Chester the Chicken Eater. You keep up that emotion for me, for me, my friend. Um, but uh, let's move on. You know, actually, sticking with the White Sox here. Um, so this isn't like any sort of breaking news by any means, but um, and it's not surprising news by any means. But sticking with the White Sox, they are interested in Liam Hendricks. That's not surprising whatsoever. They definitely need someone for the bullpen, especially with Alex Colome, uh, or at least who knows what's even going on with him. I, I don't know what's going on with him, but it looks like maybe the White Sox, they want to beef up that closer role. If they got a guy like a Liam Hendricks, oh man. Oh, that I, first off, I love Liam Hendricks. Absolutely love Liam Hendricks. That guy is just electric. I love the emotion he's got out there. Liam Hendricks is awesome. I love that guy. I think he's Australian too, so that's just cool. Um, but they're also showing interest in Michael Brantley. So again, if I were to go back here uh, to that White Sox depth chart. So that shows me the fact that, because I read the report that the White Sox weren't really in on George Springer. But now that I'm seeing that they have interest in a Michael Brantley, that shows me that the White Sox, they're not looking to break the bank. They're not looking to make any major moves. Now, Michael Brantley, that would be an interesting fit because, you know, you already have an Eloy Jimenez out there and left. You already have an Adam, 
excuse me, you already have an Adam on hell. Um, with Eloy, Eloy Jimenez, you know, he's 24 years old. Great power hitter. I don't see, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about this one. The Michael Brantley rumors here. I, I don't know about this. I don't see where this is coming from unless you want him to, to DH. I don't know about that. Maybe you bring him in on a one year deal, but I mean, I don't know. I don't really see where Michael Brantley could be a fit. I mean, you got Jose Abreu. I mean, I don't see, you know, you got, uh, I mean, well, he's, he's at first, but who knows what's going to be happening with Vaughn. I don't know. Michael Brantley, I don't really see him going anywhere with the White Sox. I mean, you got Eloy Jimenez out and left. Unless there's some kind of a trade that's cooking up for an Eloy Jimenez. I doubt that. I think the White Sox really like Eloy Jimenez. They're not going to get rid of Robert. Absolutely not. So, I don't know about this one. The White Sox interested in Michael Brantley. Uh, I don't know. I guess, I'm, I mean, especially when you just brought in a guy like uh, Adam Eaton. You know, if you already brought him in, where are you going to put Michael Brantley? I don't see where that's going to happen. Um, I mean, they're saying here uh, you could they could split time between left field and DH. Sure. Um, again, if we go back, uh, if we go back to Eloy Jimenez here, but again, he had, a, he had a very good year. Hit 296, 891 OPS, 14 home runs, 41 RBIs. If we take a look at the splits, um, I mean, he was very good against both. I don't see I don't I don't see this. I, I don't I mean, he wasn't really like bad against, you know, one particular uh type of thrower. He was good against lefties, good against righties. Eloy Jimenez had a great year. Um so unless like, you know, defensively they want to improve, that's the only thing, I, I don't know, but I don't know. I just don't see it. I think that, I think that'd be really interesting. So it says here though, um, in contrast to Jason Stark, Nightingale suggests that the White Sox have moved on from Brantley, Brantley for budgetary reasons, even though they would have preferred Brantley. That's what I'm saying. I don't see why wouldn't you've just brought in Brantley if, you know, obviously Eaton is more of a budgetary kind of a move. You got him for seven and a half million. Brantley you're, is going to cost more than seven and a half million. I don't see it. I don't see this happening. Uh, Michael Brantley going to the White Sox. I don't see it happening at all. I don't see the point. I think that's just too many outfielders at that point. Yeah, you could have someone DH, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't think, I don't know. I, I just think that's too much. Um, David Knight, thank you very much, my friend. Uh, 4K, that was, that was really cool to get to. So hopefully we can get to uh, 5K by... Uh, how many months now until the season starts? We've got about what, three months, four months. So, hey, let's get to 5K. But again, David, thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, uh, Jeremy, I, I also see you talking about Ozuna. That would be interesting. If, if you, could, you could bring in Ozuna to be the DH. Uh, Jose Abreu, you, he, would be, he would not DH at all. Um, but that's going to be interesting with because you got a guy like Andrew Vaughn who could be ready in the next couple of years. So, do you bring in a Marcelo Zuna? I don't know. I don't know. Um, that's going to be interesting. However, I could see Liam Hendricks. I really could see Liam Hendricks. Absolutely could see that. Uh, Colum A, I like Colum A, but he wasn't really much of a strikeout guy. You want your closer to be able to get a lot of strikeouts. So Hendricks is a guy. I really could see this. I really could. I think this would be a really good move. If the White Sox get Liam Hendricks, I think... Oh boy, it, that White Sox team would be um, would be looking very very nasty, looking very nasty. So, um, but yeah, baseball unboxed. I agree. I think Colome, while he did do a good job as the closer, he gets the job done. That's the one thing about Colome. He's not like the he's not like this sexy closer. You know what I mean? He's not like a um, like these hard throwing guys like a Chapman or a Hater you know, or even a Hendricks, you know, he comes, but he comes out and he gets the job done. He gets a lot of ground balls. He gets the job done. So, um, but that is where we are at with the White Sox. Let's come back here. So, uh, speaking of closers, speaking of closers, we now have another closer on the move and that's Razel Iglesias. And I got a couple of things to say about this. Um, I got a couple of different perspectives on this. So, Razel Iglesias, first off, going to the Angels, I think uh, this is a good move for the Angels. They needed to shore up that bullpen a little bit. It was a little shaky. They definitely need more starting pitching than they do bullpen. Um, I did have Alex Colome going to the Angels. 
Uh, but I guess I guess that could still happen if they want to bring him in for a setup role. But with Rezo Iglesias here, let me share the screen. Here we go. All right, so um, as we can see here, Reds trade Rezel Iglesias to the Angels. So let's pull up the stats on Iglesias real quick. He actually had a pretty good year. Um, he did struggle in 2019. He had 34 saves, but he was struggling in that role at times. The ERA kind of got up there a little bit. For, for the most part, he had a pretty productive season, even though look at the 12 losses that he had. He was blowing a lot of saves at, at uh, with the Reds. But uh, he had a, for a pretty decent year with the Reds this past year. Um, good amount of strikeouts per nine. Pretty on pace with his 2019 pace. Uh, FIP was really good. 1.84, 2.74 ERA. Iglesias was pretty good with the Reds this past year. So I think for the Angels, I think this is a good move. If we actually go look at some depth chart with the Angels... Real quick here. So if we take a look at the bullpen. Oh, look at that. So they already got Razel Iglesias on their list. So you got Ty Buxery. You got Mayers. You know, Pena. I, I still think they need some more for this bullpen. I don't think this bull, I don't think they're done with this bullpen. I think they really need to ramp it up. But getting Iglesias, I think, is a good start. So, however, where I kind of actually more reacted to this, I wasn't surprised about the Angels... Getting a guy like a Razel Iglesias. Let me actually go back to this trade real quick. Um, so it says here, uh, and, and this is exactly what, and I'm going to get to this in one second. In an out of the blue move, the Angels have acquired closer Razel Iglesias and Cash from the Reds in exchange for right hander Noe Ramirez and a player to be named later if we take a look at Noe Ramirez. So um, this is a guy out of their bullpen. They, so they basically just swapped bullpen arms. Um, so they got no, so Noe Ramirez. He's not going to be a free agent for a while. So in a way, this is actually not a bad move for the Reds, um, because they're getting a guy that's cost controlled. So, but overall, though, he hasn't. He's not really going to give you a lot. I mean, he's going to give you some okay numbers in six years. He has a four point one eight ERA. FIP is higher. He gives you a decent amount of strikeouts, but he's not going to be like a closer kind of a guy. Um, you know. I don't think this is a terrible guy to get back, but here's where I'm at with a Razel Iglesias. What are the Reds doing? What are they doing? And I, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to look at this with an open mind because I, I I get it. You had the pandemic. You got a lot of teams that are struggling. That entire Central Division right now, are, they're just struggling. The, uh, the Cubs, they're cutting costs. The Cardinals, they're cutting costs. The Reds, they're getting rid of everyone, it seems. The Pirates don't even exist. I don't even know what's going on with the Pirates. What is going on? The Brewers never spend any money. This NL Central division is... is They're just... It's, just it's, it's crazy to see, especially like a team like the Cubs who are trying to unload salary. All these teams in this division are just struggling financially. And if we take a look at the Reds, this is so surprising to me, not just because they get rid of a Razel Iglesias. In a way, I know it says it's in an, in an out of the blue move. However, with a Razel Iglesias, he is a free agent next year. So I'm not surprised to see the Reds move him. I was more surprised about them not tendering Archie Bradley a contract. That to me, I thought was more, more crazy than this. What are the Reds doing? It's like, he wasn't even going to be making, how much money was he making? He wasn't even making that much money and neither was Archie Bradley. Oh, but like, you know, I was giving a lot of crap for John Daniels for the trade deadline, but now I'm thinking, what are the Reds doing that you had, you put, you spent all of this money you got a Nick Castellanos. You got a Mike Moustakis. You brought in Trevor Bauer. What did you do all that for? What are you doing? It, it makes no sense. What are you doing? Did you basically just go for broke for one year? This looks ridiculous. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm not surprised so much at the Reza Iglesias trade because like I said, he is... Oh, we got something going on. 
Dom Raider Nation Rays Royal, what a name, has just subscribed. Welcome to the channel, my friend. But Cincinnati, what are you doing? You got, you brought in everything. You brought, you, you brought in Castellanos. You brought in Moustakis. You traded for Trevor Bauer. You brought, you, what else did you bring? You probably bought a, like, like 10 ice cream trucks. I don't understand. And now everyone is just gone. What are you doing? I can't stop saying that because really that's what I'm thinking right now. What are you doing? It just, I, I, it's fine if you want to be a seller, but just last off season, you were doing all this stuff. We got something else going on. Gold blooded has just subscribed. That is definitely not what the reds are. The reds are not gold blooded. They are not cold blooded. They are just. They are no blooded because they're idiots. I, I'm sorry. Like I, I get it. You you're it's a pandemic. I get it. You got no money coming in, but the Reds, shame on you. Shame on you. You literally, and I feel so bad for that fan base. If you're a Cincinnati Reds fan in here, I am sorry. This sucks. You know what I mean? Like, like, why would you get rid of Archie Bradley? I mean, you you could you could have brought him back for cheap. And you could have just traded him. I don't understand that. It makes no sense. Do you really have no money at all? And so I'm not going to be surprised now if they trade a guy like a Sonny Gray. I mean, I'm not going to be surprised. What, what, you might as well. Look at how much money he's making. Why are you giving? Why are you not bringing back an Archie Bradley and trading away a Razel Iglesias who really aren't that much money? But you're going to hang on to a Sonny Gray? You, you better trade Sonny Gray. Because you can't even you can't even afford a loofah at the moment, Reds. I'm just saying. I don't know. I mean, actually, this is a pretty good contract, honestly. But you, I would not be surprised to see Sonny Gray get traded. I I would not. I really would not. At this point, they're getting rid of everyone. Um, I don't know what to say. All I can say is, uh, you know, uh, Reds fans. You know, you had a lot of hope. Going into last season, I picked the Reds to win the Central last season. I picked the Reds once they made it to the playoffs. I picked the Reds to go all the way to the championship series. I was wrong. Um, but they had a, a very promising team last year. And now they have nothing. I don't know what they even have. I mean, what? I don't know. You might as well just bring Pete Rose. You couldn't. No, I take that back. You couldn't even bring Pete Rose back. That guy is like 84 years old and you couldn't even give him a contract. You, Because you can't even afford to pay anyone a nickel. Speaking of super chat or speaking of money, a $1 super chat from Spawn SI. Thank you so much for that, my friend. We might have to send that over to the Cincinnati Reds because they don't have any money. Uh, you know, they need all the money they can get. So either, uh, I, I kid, I kid, but thank you very much for the $1 super chat. Um, either way, I'm, uh, I, I feel bad for Reds fans. You can't be feeling great. You know, I mean, what are they going to do with their team? You know, we might as well just go take a, a, a look real quick. Let's go take a look. Could, are you going to trade Castellanos? Or, I mean, or what are you going to do? Are you gonna are you gonna try and get rid of Mustakis, Eugenio Suarez? I mean, Shogo Akiyama. You sure get rid of him? I mean, I don't know. Castellanos, you just brought in on a pretty decent deal. I mean, he ended up doing okay last year. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go. I just don't understand. I don't. I don't get it. Anyway, maybe I'm jumping the gun too much. Am I jumping the gun? If I am. Uh, you know, I don't know, but I just don't like what they're doing here, especially when it's like you're getting rid of these guys that aren't too much money, you know, so anyway, but what can you do? Uh, what do you think of the Reds right now? Uh, do you, do you understand what they're doing? I mean, do you, do you like what they're doing? I don't know. Am I just not seeing something? Um, am I just an idiot? Tell me and tell me below. Give me a thumbs up if, uh, you know. If you, if you like what they're doing, I guess, if you like this trade for the Reds, uh, give me a big thumbs down if you uh, are having some problems with the Reds right now. Either way, hey, good for uh, good for the Angels. They got a, you got a pretty decent you know guy to fill in as your closer. He throws hard. Um, so for the Angels, hey, good move for the Reds. Please, 
we I think we all need to uh I saw someone comment this in the chat. I'm going to give you the credit for that cuz I laughed internally. Uh BZ Baseball, the Reds Foundation. Everyone, if you have just an extra 50 cents in your bank account, please send it to the Cincinnati Reds. They really need it more than us right now. If you can, please help them out. They really need all of the help they can get. So everyone, 50 cents, it's not that much. Send it to the Cincinnati Reds. They will appreciate it, I promise. Um, So anyway, let's get David Knight. They are very confused. I don't know what's going on. So here we go. Let's come back here. So uh, we're almost done here. Um, We are going to stay in the central part of the... Uh, of the, uh, the, I don't even know what I was saying. The, the central part of the, of the States. Um, we are moving on to a, a busy team, uh, just like the White Sox. They're making some moves. They got a division rival that are making some moves as well. How about the Kansas City Royals? Can we give it up for the Kansas City Royals right now? I love what the Kansas City Royals are doing. Isn't it hilarious that the Kansas City Royals, a team that wasn't even relevant for the last couple of years. They're going out, they're spending money, and the Reds are getting rid of everyone. Who I, I don't understand that. The Re- the Royals right now, can we please, in the chat, can we please, you may not like all these moves the Royals are making, but can we please give the, a round of applause to the Kansas City Royals? They are staring everyone in the face right now, and they're saying, huh, what pandemic? We're going to be, we're going to spend some money. We're going to bring in Mike Miner. We're going to bring in a Carlos Santana. We're not afraid to spend some money. And this is what I like to see. The Kansas City Royals, this is what the MLB offseason needs to be. A team like the Kansas City Royals making some moves, a small market team. You, I mean, to me, you got to think, well, hold on a second. How are all these other teams struggling? But the Kansas City Royals seem to be doing just fine. They must have been saving up their pennies for the last uh, few years. Um, they haven't been competing for a little while now, so they must have had a nice little savings account to spend some money. But I love, this is the complete opposite of what the Reds are doing. This is the complete opposite. What I love about this is that it they're not flashy moves. They're not a, a crazy amount of moves. You know, you're getting a guy like a Mike Miner. You're getting a guy like a Carlos Santana. I'm leaving someone out here. Who is the other guy I'm leaving out? Uh, who is the other guy they signed? They brought in someone else. <sighs> they brought in someone. I can't remember. Was that was it just Mike Miner? I can't remember. H- help me out in the chat. Oh, was it Michael Taylor? I think I think that's who I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah. So here, let me. Go share the screen. All right, so take a look here. Royal sign, Carlos Santana. It was official as of 3.03 p.m. today. It's a two-year deal. Uh, Carlos Santana had a bit of a down year for the Indians this past year, a 6.99 OPS, kind of like an Adam Eaton in a way, uh, down year. Both are respectable players. Uh, You saw Carlos Santana provide some power. But Carlos Santana, this is a guy... He was an all-star in 2019. This is a guy that hits for power. He's going to drive in runs. The OPS was a, a little low going back two years ago, but he bumped that right up with the Indians in 2019. This, I think, this is a great signing. This is a great signing for the Royals. I love this move. I absolutely love this move. I think this is great you're getting a guy who's not very old. How old is he? 34 years old. I think he still has a couple of years left in the tank. But what I love about this move, what I love about it, is that the Royals, they're not going to be like the Reds. And they're not going to just start getting rid of everyone. They want to give something for their fans. That's what I love. They're not, again, they're not going out and getting a guy like a George Springer. They're not getting out, going out and getting a guy like a Trevor Bauer. They're not making like these big splashy moves. But they're getting some solid guys that can just make your team, you know, a little more fun to watch, I guess. Like, you're not going to... Are they going to be winning a division? I don't know. But the Royals are a team that have a lot of potential. There's a lot to like about this Royals team. Let me pull up the depth chart here. The one thing about the Royals is they got some fun starting pitching. You got a guy like Brady Singer. 
You got a guy like Brad Keller. You got a guy like Chris Bubik. Danny Duffy's solid. This is a decent starting rotation. It's not the worst starting rotation, or it's not the best starting rotation in the world, but it's not the worst by any means. I think if Mike Miner can have a bit of a bounce back year, go back to the Royals and have a solid year. I think this Royals team could be kind of a sneaky team in this upcoming season. You got some fun pieces. I think the bullpen needs some pieces, but you got a guy like Salvador Perez still. I mean, you got a Whit Merrifield there still. You got some young players. You got Michael Taylor, who you just brought in. There's a lot to like. Oh, and you got Jorge Soler. Sorry, I forgot about Jorge Soler. So... There's a lot to like. I think this is a decent team. I, I, And as a Royals fan, as a Royals fan, I think you can go to sleep tonight thinking, you know what? I like what the Royals are doing. They're not, you know, like I said, they're not, they didn't bring in a guy like a Trevor Bauer. No, they're not going to make that kind of a move, but they're going to make some respectable moves and they're going to put a competitive team out there. They're not going to be like the Reds and just get rid of everyone when just a year ago, you just gave the, all these Reds fans so much hope, possibly a World Series. There was people saying the Reds are going to win the World Series this year. There are a lot of people who were high on the Cincinnati Reds this year. And now they're just throwing it all down the toilet. So I don't know, I, you know, but I like what the Reds are doing. They got a lot of young starting pitching here. I mean, you know, Carlos Santana, he can have, if he has a bounce back year, put him in that lineup with a Jorge Soler who's going to hit some bombs. Put him in there with a Whit Merrifield. You know, if we actually go take a look at who they brought in, Michael Taylor. Um, here we go. So, again, he hasn't done too much, but there's a lot to like about him. You know, he's he's going to get you some steals. I mean, he's, he's a pretty fast guy. He had 24 steals back in 2018. I mean, he's not going to do a whole ton, but this is a guy he had 19 home runs in 2017. He had an 806 OPS that year. That was his best season overall. It was actually a really good season. Look at this season. He had a two, uh, 271 average. He stole 17 bases that year, 19 homers, 53 RBIs. This is a guy that has potential and he's not very, and he's not, he's only 29. I mean, sure, have we maybe seen the peak of a Michael Taylor? Possibly. But I think this is a guy, who knows, maybe put him in the right environment. Maybe he ends up having a good year. Who knows? I think with the Royals, I think this is just a fun team. I think there's a lot to like about this Royals team. Um, Again, I love this Carlos Santana move. Again, he had a bit of a down year. But if he bounces back, this Royals team, I think they could add something for the bullpen. That definitely, that bullpen could definitely use an arm. If we actually, actually, you know what? Let me, let me, hold on a second. Let me go take a look. How did their bullpen rank last year? Let's go. Uh, Pitching. Leaders, team. All right, where did the Royals rank? Okay, they didn't have the worst bullpen last year. They were, they had a, uh, the 12th ranked bullpen. So not a bad bullpen. You, like I said, you want to maybe see an upgrade. So, you know, Greg Holland did really good. Jesse Hahn did good. Or is Greg Holland even coming back? I think Greg Holland's a free agent. But you got Jesse Hahn coming back. There's a lot of potential there. You know, Kyle Zimmer did really good. I mean, Barlow gave you a good amount of innings. Is he coming back? I don't. Yeah, is Barlow's coming back. You know, honestly, I take it back. This, I thought this Royals bullpen was a lot worse. I don't know why I thought I... Maybe I'm thinking of their starting pitching. Their starting pitching overall last year didn't rank very good. But this bullpen's actually not bad. Bring in another arm for that bullpen. You know, maybe they could bring in a guy like an Archie Bradley. I don't know. I mean, hey, one one team's treasure or the the, the Cincinnati Reds, their, uh, their trash could be the Royals' treasure. I could see them maybe bringing, bringing in an Archie Bradley, someone on like a, like a one-year, $5 million deal, you know, $7.5 million, something like that. I think you could see the Royals do that. I love what they're doing. Um, so I think I saw earlier all of you were giving thumbs-ups to the Royals. Uh, you know, are they going to... Okay, so they're going to try and bring back Holland. I, hey, wh- yeah, absolutely. He had a good year last year. Take a look at what Holland did last year. 28 innings. About 10 strikeouts per nine, a 1.91 ERA, 2.52 FIP. Hey, look at the Royals, man. Look out for the Royals. Look out. You know, this is a fun team. And if we go back to their starting staff, I had um, Brady Singer 
I had him for a couple of spot starts in fantasy last year, and he really rewarded me. This guy is 24 years old. He really showed some potential. He was the 18th pick overall in the 2018 draft. So there's a lot of potential there with him. You got a guy like Chris Bubik. Uh, I mean, he's 23. There's a lot of potential there. He was the 40th overall pick in the 2018 draft. Look at what the look at the Royals, man. They got a lot of good people in that front office. They are really good with player development. They got really good scouting over there in Kansas City. You know, Kansas City. I'll tell you, if they're, you know, I loved. I was just talking with uh, with, with my best friend earlier today, and I was saying, you know, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about how good the Royals were in the mid 2010s. You know, they made it to that World Series against the Giants, and then they won the World Series the next year. That Royals team was so fun to watch, and I love that team. If there was another team in the American League that I didn't root for other than the Red Sox, I think the Royals could be a team, you know? Um, and you know, Paul, Paul, I love that. I love that. Paul, that is, that's a really, you know, who knows how they, if, I know they've been spending some money, but I think Sonny Gray with Kansas City, I think would be awesome. You know, Sonny Gray, I know he went to the Yankees. He didn't do very hot with the Yankees. A lot of people think he just he what he didn't do very well in that pressure cooker of a market, um, you know. But could you see a guy like a Sonny Gray in Kansas City? That sounds like a good fit to me. He's not a lot of money, but you know, I think with the Royals, maybe they could swing a trade. They have prospects. Don't be surprised to see the Royals quietly make some moves. Um, Again, I love what the Royals are doing it, uh, doing here, bringing in a Carlos Santana. They're making these minor moves. I'm telling you, I know the White Sox, they seem a little more flashy at the moment, bringing in a guy like a Lance Lynn, but don't sleep on the Kansas City Royals. I like what they're doing. Who knows if they actually, you know, have a team that's good enough to get to the playoffs next year, but I think you could see a team that is, uh, that's really fun to watch. And I think you could see, um, you know, a, uh, a sneaky good team. So either way, let's come back. Um, but everyone, that's that's all the baseball news I got. Um, hopefully, Drew, I I love I love that. I, these minor moves. I love that. Good call from you, my friend. Um, <laughs> you know, I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> I didn't even mean to say minor moves. I just, but hey, you guys are, are that good to where you can point that stuff out. So, hey, love all you guys for uh, for being here. Love all you guys for coming out tonight. Um, but that's all I have for tonight, everyone. Uh, 73 people in the chat right now. Ended up being a pretty decent turnout. So, as of right now, uh, I think that's pretty much all I got. So, hopefully there's some news tomorrow. Um, it, it, hey, if there's more news, I'll be right back here at my desk talking to you guys. So, um, Everyone, have a great night. Thanks for coming out tonight. If you are just coming in and you're, uh, you kind of just missed everything, you know, rewind back to the beginning. Watch what I had to say. Uh, before I get out of here, hit that thumbs up for me. It really helps this stream get out to more baseball fans. Uh, if you are here and you have not subscribed yet, hey, consider subscribing down below. I'm talking baseball here all the time. So everyone, have a good night and I'll talk to you next time.